commence combat preparation. Good morning, afternoon, evening, or f Sunday. Wherever you are in the world, we are back into the Nexus Gaming series. We got a Division E matchup. Jumping all over the place within NGS today. Left-hand side of the map is going to be Habitual Line Steppers, which will have a Maev, Muradin, Blaze, Brightwing, and Mephisto. Right side of the map is going to be your out-of-pocket players. You'll have a Greymane, Varian, Stukov, Diva, and Asmodan. Kaimo is such a diva. He is pretty. On the right, we do have that Asmodan, and that is going to be your Twitch Gamble. First Twitch Gamble of the day, will Asmodan finish base stacking? Not the level one. Not the one. He Will he finish the Annihilation 400 stacks? Get your gambles in. It is a double soak map. It is gluttony level one, which means you get four stacks of Annihilation per enemy hero hit rather than the two. Polymorph Umbra Bind. And it looks like our Asmodan will not be taken down. Does throw another dunk out into the wave. 12 stacks currently. And Bean's a little low here. The Muradin doesn't land the Stormbolt. He as well is low. Enter X is... Not gonna get hit by the dunk right there. Boomer APM does manage to get hit. And uh, Mr. Bandit. Those legs. Quit licking him. I gotta see, does Boomer APM have Boomer APM? Not really, actually. And I know the APM stats in this game are very not true or real or correct or... What's the word I'm looking for? The data isn't pooled properly in this game, but the Mephisto currently has the highest APM on their team. So maybe, maybe it's like a, maybe it's like a feign. Like, oh, I have Boomer APM. I'm not good. And then it's like, blam! I'm the best mage in Division E. Oh, Diva does have APM. That is true. Yeah, yeah Vates does have APM. Do you have a Blaze Hanzo Genji Sylvanas game? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not believe I do. I do not believe I do. We have seen Hanzo and Sylvanas today. I don't think we've seen Genji or Blaze. Oh, wait, never mind. We've seen a Blaze. So we just need a Genji. Alright, anyways, back into it for Division E. Left hand side, we'll be seeing the fortification camp grabbed here on the Volskaya Foundry. Map number one of this series as Mephisto and Yielding Power continues to build up a few stacks here. Q build uh, 10 out of 40 stacks. You'll get the... It's the extra 100 damage at 20 and then the extra charge at 40. Pin down for the Maiev. We'll be seeing Bidak Armor for our Stukov. Uh, I don't know if you want Biotic Armor here, honestly. There's not... I mean, like, Maev does have auto attack damage, physical damage. But I feel like it's a lot of spell damage, realistically. Because I believe Phantom Knives is a spell-based... Like, is spell-based is spell damage. I don't think it's physical damage. Obviously, your auto attacks are. I don't know. Not judging the Stukov player, but I, I wonder if you could have gone into a different... What if they uh, could have gone into... Um, oh, what's the level four... I'm blanking on the Stukov talents, I apologize. Give me a second here. V this. Yeah, maybe like one good spread or revigorous uptake. Um, I feel like those could have been beneficial. We'll see, we'll see how it all works out, but I just, I don't know if the Biotic Armor was really needed here. Yeah, the green one, the green one. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Stark, because because the green one is like, it's if you spread the healing pathogen to three or more allies, and on this map, it makes a lot of sense because you're going to be grouped up around the objective. You also have a gray main stuke off and varying together, so they're going to be kind of clumped up. You definitely get that cooldown reduction on your healing pathogen, so. But either way, we're not, we're not trying to flame the player. We're just having a little discussion on the talents, and as always, we try and cr create a realm where people can learn a little bit from their own games. I may not know everything, but I have a decent knowledge of Heroes of Storm. Charge continues over on the right-hand side for out of pocket. That's going to be a jumper potion starting things out from the blaze. The lurking arm from the Sukov does go down. The Umbra Bind from Maev is pretty big. Trying to finish pin down as that is a taunt onto, uh, onto Muradin. He does get picked off here. Overtime, huge jumper potion splash onto Asmodan and Greymane. Orc and Beans trying to chop up the enemies, but it might just be Orc and Beans. Absolutely fine here. I thought the Grey Mane may be picked off by Maev Mephisto stepping up, but it doesn't seem like that's the prop, uh, the priority. 
The objective is the main thing they're going to stick around. They're going to group up around Brightwing a bit here to try and get some of those pulse heals from her trait. No more heroes. Dove on by the Varian. The lurking arm from the Stukov did go into low blow level 1 as well as that growing infestation level 7. Base shift from Brightwing onto no more heroes. Another dunk from Asmodan picking up stackage on that baseline quest for the Twitch prediction. 8 to 8 in our levels currently. Did someone remember to grab first when we had the stream crash 38 minutes ago? I didn't see if anyone did. I was kind of struggling to get everything back up and running. Oh, someone did? Okay, cool. Nicely done. Diva boosts in. Overtime 99 to 99 on the objective phase. I don't think I've ever seen this before in a casted game. It's not that big of a deal, but it's still kind of cool to see it highly contested here. Enter X is almost going to go down and does get picked up by the Grey Man, Gilnay, and Cocktail. Pell is low, and, Mur and Murden does fall. It's a triple kill over to the side of Out of Pocket, and they will grab this first objective. I'd really, 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 really love to see anyone but Asmodan go in this. Now, I know Asmodan doesn't have a ton of mana, but I just his siege would have been so much better. Like, throw Stukov and Diva inside of this, and you may be like, well, but Bahamut, you want your healer for siege. Well, it's the death timers are still lapsing for some characters. The rotation still has to come through. Asmodan would have offered up more siege value. And Stukov, I mean, yeah, the healing pathogen is nice to have, but I don't think it was one of those situations where you would have been like, oh my god. We died because Stukov was in the Triglov. But either way, mid lane, Triglov will take down the fort here. Going to prioritize that. Passive experience, gain, passive experience gained on the right-hand side, as well as that periodic catapult pressure. We'll see the Tide Sin for Asmodan. Tide of Sin, excuse me. You've also got the Bunny Hop Diva, Massive Shove, Shield Wall for the Variants, who's got the protection status when he hits the W, but only just one charge of it. And Curse Bullet for the Grey Mane. On the opposing side, it will be your Containment Disc, Avatar, Bunker, Blink Heal, and Durance of Hate. As the top lane fort does go down, a double fort phase, and... As much as I was hounding on wanting Asmodan out of the Triglove, I think this still worked out really well, so I will pull back my comment as we have another fight breaking out on top. The phase shift from Brightwing bolsters the health of Murden. Did go into Greater Polymorph level 1. Second time we've seen that today. So maybe Greater Polymorph is starting to build some momentum with these Brightwing players. I'll have to try and talk to one and see if maybe they have some opinions on this. But we also will be seeing that level 7 Sticky Flare. Enemy heroes hit with Arcane Flare have their movement speed slowed by 20% for 3 seconds. Increase the slow to 40 if they're hit by the center portion of the Arcane Flare. And you also have that Dream Shot. So you increase the Arcane Flare range by 50%, but hitting heroes with the Arcane Flare center reduces its cooldown to 2 seconds. Not by, 2. And of course there's the Greater Polymorph, which gives you cooldown reduction on Polymorph by 7 seconds. Which I believe baseline is 12 or 15, I forget. 12, yes. So you take it down to a five second cooldown if you land that center spot. So just, there's a lot of, like, the the cool thing with seeing the change in Hyper Shift is maybe we get different Brightwing builds. I've been seeing a lot of Brightwings go into Hyper Shift level one, and then they also pick up Peekaboo level seven for the extra shielding, kind of make up for that 2% reduction on Hyper Shift's value. You die because any two heroes are in the Triglov smile. It doesn't matter who. I mean, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Just kind of working through the idea. Like the only reason I was just talking about the Asmodan just because of siege value. Now, of course, when he did enter into the Trigla, so I'm trying to throw away a teabag and talk at the same time and not miss the trash can. Uh, Asmodan didn't have a whole lot of mana, so there is that factor as well. Instead of having Asmodan reset or go and tap well, they just threw him inside the Trigla, so there's that counterpoint as well. There's, there's a lot of things to think about in all of this, but the big thing to note is it's 4-0 to zero in kills, out-of-pocket leading on uh, Volskaya Foundry, map number one of this best of three series in Division E of NGS. A lurking arm down from Stukov, a few enemies back off of that. Habitual line steppers will not be taken down, or at least they won't lose their Muradin. His trait does kick in, he didn't go third win level one, does have <clears throat> block stacks at level one. Great main lunges in, the Stormbolt connects onto Varian, block stacks denying some of the Grey main auto attack value. Containment disc on to said Worgen. Massive shove to push back the Dwarf King Muradin as a dunk comes out from Asmodan. 160 baseline stacks for him. A piercing storm bolt, the jet propulsion from Blaze, the lurking arm is the answer from the Stuke office. Maiev, a loon's wrath that's getting some extra damage. Fan of knives pinned down, not done just yet. She might be able to finish it out here, possibly. 
But a lurking arm down from the Stukov is denying some of the ability power of the enemies. Fan of Knives getting one hit onto Orc and Beans. Varian goes down the left-hand side. The Stukov lurking arm to maybe zone, but maybe zone is the real answer. And meanwhile in top lane, it's D.Va just pushing up a wave, getting a keep front gate. Control point B is up and available as well. And we will see level 13 picked up by Mephisto when he decides to uh, choose. I'm assuming it's a Horrid Skull. Yeah, there it is. Ooh, we got the camp buff from Asmodan, level 13, chain of command. The cooldown of, uh, wait a second, hold on. Piercing Stormbolts into Stukov. He's getting low. Great one tries to get the massive shove as he... Counterplay. Unfortunately, Murden doesn't get shoved into the fort as uh, Stukov was hoping, and Right Wing finds the kill. Uh, but Chain of Command, the cooldown of de uh, Demon Lieutenant's Demonic Smite is reduced by two seconds and grants 25% increased damage to nearby friendly minions, mercenaries, and Asmodan summons. I feel like I think a lot of people look at this talent and they go, oh, it's Mercenary King, Queen, Mercenary Dude when you throw a demon in the lane, but there's actually more value to it than we, than meets the eye. They're kind of like Transformers. And Greymane goes down, trying to harass onto this camp over here on the right-hand side. Actually, no, sorry. Map, my brain went backwards on the map. Greymane was trying to grab his own camp and got invaded. That's what actually what happened, my bad. For some reason, swapped the Greymane around on teams right there. Mongo is doing their best to back away and no kill onto Mongo. Mongo own. Well, diva has got a trig love that she kind of just chilled and got at the top of the map. So she'll have boosters out of this. I think, yeah, D I think Diva's just wholly committed to just taking down this keep in top lane. And honestly, I think she can do this and get away. Oh, actually, no. That trick love's getting auspiciously low right there. Stukov lurking arm goes down. There's going to be a containment just thrown out by the Maeb, but she doesn't find anyone with that. Fan and Knives to try and take down the rest of this trick love protector, but Murden, they want to chase the Great One. Does have that heavy impact? No, actually doesn't. I thought there was a slow from Murden's Dwarf Toss, or a bigger slow from Murden's Dwarf Toss, but that's a curse bullet from Greymane. Boomer APM. They're all caught inside the Diva Bunny Hop, which is humongous right now. Great One will go down to Murden, so they do trade Mephisto for Stukov, but that's Brightwing picked off as well. No more heroes. Will they activate the Spirit of Vengeance to get away? No, Greymane lunges in and finds that kill. A triple kill. A three for one. You cannot be upset about that on the side of out of pocket habitual line steppers trying to make sure they don't lose their murder in here jet propulsion from blaze moving up from the bottom lane a storm bolt onto the variant but there's still no tower shots onto him and Craymane almost jumps in and takes down the murden who's able to tap well by the way asmodan doing asmodan things in bottom lane We'll take down the fort. Next trigger lab protector will be in control point C. And I do believe we're about 30 to 60 seconds away from our next objective phasing. Hmm. We do see the hush level 16 for our bright wing. No critter eyes. Diva will lose mech. She didn't get the activation on the mech explosion. What's up, Ash Bash? How you doing, bud? Spirit of Vengeance in. Umbral Bind applied to Varian. He's trying to back away. The pew, pew, pew from D.Va doesn't stop the kill into Varian. And it's five to seven in kills. Control point C still not announced yet. Asmodan still having free siege in bottom. He's really low on mana, so I'd love to see him back away. He did go into Hellrift level 16 because this Asmodan player likes quality level 16 talents. Yes, I know Trample has value, but I'm a Hellriff boy all day. Because you get to scream, look at my crit kickers. <laughs> so. It's like Diva, Greymane, and Stukov will grab the Bida Committer for top lane. Fortification Camp grabbed on the right. We still have all three forts available for out of pocket. So this is uh, habitual line steppers really need to find a hum they, they need a few really good team fights. Like one good team fight, they could maybe take down a couple forts here. Maybe they could run it down a lane depending on where the fight happens. They could run it down and take down fort and keep. That timers are relatively long at this point. But even then, the, like one good team fight won't be like game ending. It won't be game shifting too drastically. 
Two good team fights, and I really do feel like the map could be uh, equalized here. Asmodee with a huge dunk, a massive shove from Stukov. That's going to be a taunt onto the Muradin, who does manage to get the av activation of Avatar. Blink kills from the bright wing. Muradin rushing on out of this one as the control point is up in 20 seconds. Over in the top lane, D.Va continues to split push, but this time Pat is going to be aware of that. Clears out the minion wave. Diva trying to do the same thing against the enemy side. Does have the mech explosion if she wants to activate that the last second. It looks like Vates won't be utilizing any mech explosion. But 20 talents here here on the right. Orkin Beans has got that blunderbuss. We've got the Lord to the Alliance. The top off first. Duke off. He actually went into Universal Carrier level 16 as well. We've got the pop and lock for our D.Va, and Asmodan picks up the upgrade with the Black Pool. We'll talk about that in a second. It's got some cool stuff on it, but I think a team fight will break out. Containment Disc onto the Grey Main. Good Jet Propulsion timing right there. The massive shove from Stukov pushes Muradin right next to the Grey Main, and I think uh, Stukov may have made a small error on that one. Laser from Asmodan does fully complete. Another dunk coming out from him. Diva in top lane split pushing once again. She's just trying to end the game for the team while the rest are going to brawl it around control point C. But that will be a double kill over to the left hand side. If they get this trig love, that could be huge. But as I said, Diva still pushing, still split, still pushing. So while we have all of that, while we probably have a hearth out from, looks like, Blaze to go clear things, let's check on that level 20 for Asmodan. So Glow of Annihilation, empowered by Tide of Sin, so the level 10. Also leaves a black pool at their impact location for five seconds. Enemies within the pool lose eight armor per second, stacking up to 15, and take 123 damage per second. So basically after two seconds, they have minus 15 armor. Could you imagine if it, if it was minus eight armor times 15? Like the max stackage could be my, like whatever, whatever that math equals out to. <laughs> could you imagine? Pop and lock from D.Va. She will activate the mecha explosion. I think a phase shift from Brightwing does connect. Enter X almost goes down, and D.Va's like, maybe I can get this kill. Maybe I can get this kill. D.Va does not, and she doesn't get the camp either. Triglop Protector will be picked up by the side of Habitual Line Steppers, and this is kind of the late game they needed. They take down the fort after those couple kills in the bottom lane objective area. The camp will be stolen away by D.Va. Greyman currently trying to chase down Brightwing to make something happen. Curse Bullet. I mean, it's it's... <laughs> It's 35% of, like, I don't know, a uh, 1,000 HP, so it wasn't a ton of damage right there. <laughs> Maybe less than a 1,000, actually. Either way, not a ton of damage from, from Greymane right there into the bright wing with the curse bolt, but they still find the kill. And now Greymane lunges in onto this murdered in bottom lane, rolls forward, has a couple auto attacks. The storm bolt thrown back into Greymane, Orc and Beans. Keeps that inner beast active, getting those autos onto the trigger protector as the keep does not go down. Diva, as I mentioned, split soaking, doing the macro thing. Kaima wanted a Diva game. There it is. Asmodan, a 342 baseline stacks, if you're wondering. I'm grateful for both teams getting a kill. Yeah, after coming off of that booty, booty, booty beating. <laughs> after watching Boogans booty slap the enemy team in that last series, it is nice to have something a little bit more back and forth. Because that was that was a that was a booty slap of a Nexus Division series. Well, Trick Love in mid tried to find some value. Asmodan dissuades that, getting a little extra stackage, dunking into that as well as getting the level seven Master Destruction channel onto the objective. The Trig Love, Diva in top lane. She's gonna see the blaze boosts away. The Trig Love Protector is seen over here as well. Unstoppable is not going to be, well, is going to deny the Umbral Bind pulling D.Va back. Low cooldown. Actually, it's not that low of a cooldown. I thought it was around 50-ish, but it's actually a 70-second cooldown. Uh, and that gives no cooldown reduction. Looks like camp over here in the bottom left is going to be grabbed really quickly. Fortification camp. We'll have our second objective phase, objective A2. First bullet doesn't connect onto the Muradin, but that's going to be our variant trying to back away. Brightwing goes down to Stukov, a low blow. Nicely done right there. Avatar from Muradin, he's very split from his team. 
Biotic emitter on the ground as well. Murden Dwarf Toss is in. They want this fight. The Avatar, or excuse me, the Rewind is activated while Avatar is out. The Durance of Fate spreading to a few enemies right there. The Bunker comes down from the Blaze. The Laser from the Asmodan is going to continue onto the Maya, but she does go down. Murden steps up. Mephisto so very low. The Dunk won't take down Boomer, but he's got to be careful because if you step into the Black Pool, that's going to be some damage. Greymane actually gets the kill right there. The camp, I think, was picked up by the side of uh, Habitual Line Steppers, but Asmodan Dunk City finds the kill. Diva pushing onto the core with a catapult and a siege camp that was grabbed all the way on the top right. She could back away and grab the other siege camp. Blaze is here. Greymane and friends are rotating in. Greymane will get hit once, twice by the keep here. Asmodan working on the camp on the right-hand side. He actually, he wants to grab it. He doesn't want to grab it. He wants to grab it. Okay, he's going to end up grabbing it right there. Bida Commander thrown down on the ground. Oh, Pat, you got to be careful of that bunny hop right there. The stun, good Rocket Glove defense from the core. Unfortunately, won't be enough. Right wing, the lone defender right now. The Rocket Glove does push back that Diva Mech explosion, but that is going to be map number one in this Division E matchup going over to the side of Out of Pocket. GG, well played. But the stacks, it's almost like I had a gut feeling the game was going to end, so I purposefully left the stacks off for a while to make chat feel a little nervous about their Twitch gambles. It's almost like I have this, like, slight amount of showmanship on my channel. Slight. It's like, it's like I think about these things ever so slightly. Kind of keep you on your toes. It's like going to Home Depot. You don't know how much you're going to spend. Quick 2-0 in this Division E matchup. We have a Asmodan, Nazebo, Lili, Varian, and Greymane for out of pocket. And as I said before, we have a Twitch prediction. It does not matter what talents Nazebo takes. It doesn't matter if he did. He could go Ravenous Spirit, and he could go for Annihilating Spirit at level 20. We just care about this number. Hell, he could actually take the... Uh, it actually would matter if he does take the uh, Voodoo Ritual level 20, where you can self-cleanse by spending your Voodoo Ritual stacks, which would reduce the baseline. So there's that. So either way, Twitch Gamble is up and available for all of you. Get your predictions in. We just want to know what this number is at the end of the game. 175 or more, 174 or less. Get them in. So, Sergeant Hammer sets up in bottom lane. Garrosh is going to be here as well. Asmodan. Oh, Nazebo gets thrown out of position, but there's no really CC to follow that up. Garrosh avoids the zombie wall from Nazebo. Groundbreaker goes out as well. It is going to be Unrivaled Strength level 1 for Garrosh, so he's not going to be having the Warbringer stackage, cooldown reduction, and damage over time. As our Asmodan works on a few more stacks here. 20 already. Does go into Gluttony level 1. Spiders for Nazebo makes sense. I actually kind of wish that Nazebo went into Things of the Deep. Uh, having the extra range against the Sergeant Hammer, Garrosh, and Junkrat would be really nice. Also, the poke around the objective. Now, of course, you're not scaling up the Widowmakers and stuff, which, by the way, Widowmakers level 1 after Corpse Spiders attack heroes 100 times. Their attack damage is increased by 25% and their duration is increased by 1 second. Spider build is really good, but I feel like Things of the Deep may have been a little bit better up against this composition. We'll have to see how it all works out in the end. Hey, it could be spiders all day. Who knows? We're gonna find out. Asmodan grabs the camp on the right side, Brightwing and Junkrat for the left. Leork soloing top currently, and that is gonna be a little bit of an experience loss on the side of out of pocket, as they were trying to deal with the hammer and bottom, and it's a little bit of a, little bit of a haphazard start here for the side of out of pocket. Not that it's bad by any means, but it just seems like uh, they're struggling with some of the macro aspects of this map. Spiders at 1 and 7 is nice for accidentally killing a squishy, but range is great for Gary and Hammer. Yeah, I absolutely agree, Stark. I absolutely agree. Yeah. Like, maybe spiders can be really good around the objective, but right here, yeah, this is, this is just... Struggle, struggle city right now for the Nazebo as Sergeant Hammer is set up on the low side of the bottom lane. Really? Do we not have any gamblers? Did you all just blow your wad in map number one of a best of three series? By the way, if you are new to the stream, be sure to follow. I said this during the ads a few moments ago, but uh, if you are new to the stream, be sure to follow. We got great content here, six days of streams. We average around six hours per stream. Sometime I've actually been pushing up a little bit further than that. Been trying to do a little bit higher average, so. And, you know, 
you got someone to get you through your workday a little bit faster. We have a pretty consistent stream schedule. So, six will be here on both sides in a moment. Objective phase is almost here as well. It's ready to go. 30 seconds of channel time. Two jailers to deal with. Asmodan working through stackage and top up against Leoric. Laser on to Pat, who's going to answer back with a drain hope. Bit of a trade in HP right there. Spiders are getting a hammer, though. Yeah, but, I mean, like, are spiders going to get a kill on hammer? I don't think so. I feel like things of the deep getting spell power. So you have a hut. You have 10% increased spell power at 100 stacks of your voodoo ritual, which does is, which is not too big of an ask of a Nazebo player. And you have the ability to have the further range to throw spiders and zombie walls. And the reason that I also bring it up, I mean, there's Junkrat who's got great range. Garrosh you don't want to step up into. Leoric is, I mean, same thing. You don't want to step up into him because I'm assuming he's going to have Entomb. And then same thing with Hammer. Like, the extra range, maybe you get a zombie wall around her. And then Varian and friends can step up. So there's a duality in the conversation. There is a duality in the conversation to be had. Two sides of the coin. We'll have to see, as I said, we'll see how it works. It looks like it's full spider build for our Nazebo players, so we'll, we can we can comment on that as the game does progress. Yep. Garrosh looking for the groundbreaker. Polymorph from Brightwing. Great one. Tried to get the channel, but it looks like Lily will back away. That's with Dan over in mid. We'll clear things out right there. Hammer's still doing things in bottom, and there's a zombie wall that actually almost set up a kill into Boomer APM, but looks like Hammer will just uh, roll away. No more heroes able to get that Concussion Mind to back off. We currently have Steel Trap build at 4 and 7 for our Junkrat with the Chattering Teeth, and I believe Sticky Wicket. Yep. Oh, Orkin Bean's getting low here. The Sergeant Hammer doesn't have the movement speed to close the distance, but uh-oh, Mongo goes in, and Mongo... Oh, Orkin Beans almost goes down to Junkrat. He wants a concussion, but he doesn't get the kill. No more heroes caught inside the zombie wall, and he's going to take a bit of damage, or they are going to take a bit of damage, excuse me, but no more heroes does not go down. Yo, Kalavath, what's up, bud? We just casted your game. If you missed uh, if you missed the uh, Nexus Division matchup, just Google the scene in Simpsons where Homer is is beating up Krusty the Clown impersonator or something like that. No, no, it's it's Homer's impersonating Krusty the Clown and kills up kills like the Hamburglar guy, and the kids are all watching in horror. That's essentially the Nexus Division game we just casted. Orkin Bean's a little low on the right-hand side. There's going to be a groundbreaker from Garage. Mongo trying to get out of here. So is the great one with those fast feet. Some heals going out. The zombie wall dropped by the Nazebo. But he, Nazebo, is going to be thrown back into the enemy's side. No more heroes. A little bit low here. Looking for the concussion mine to back away. And we'll be able to get that. The Entomb from Lior coming out. Creating a little bit of terrain. But still, the kill from Sergeant Hammer will be a double into Greymane and Nazebo. Nazebo stackage currently at 26 on the baseline for the Twitch predictors. Which it looks like we did not get a big gamble on this one, which is confusing to me, but whatever. Yeah, here, sorry, I have a button for it. This is, um, this is the easiest way to sum summarize your series. <laughs> That's essentially the Nexus Gaming series we just casted. Asmodan will go down and bottom. As we're sitting here memeing and waiting for the objective phase to move into lanes. Greymane up against Leoric trying to defend. Mid lane has no push or uh, anti-push or counter siege, if you will. Bottom lane seems to be the main priority. This is a boss lane. Granted, Null Pack in mid is a little bit more prioritized. One of the lowest cooldowns in Heroes of the Storm for a camp at a minute 30. And it has insane siege value with armor reduction onto structures to minus 20. The Orc is going to be getting about 50% of the fort in top. Asvidan dunks out into mid, but I think Junkrat might be able to poke this down. Not sure where those grenades were going, but we're not going to question it. Face shift from Brightwing. Mid fort will be confirmed. Double fort phase for the side of habitual line steppers. As out of pocket. Oh, they're looking to figure out how to make things work out here. 
I lost all my points in the Asmodan. Oh, so it's an officially a stream now, because you lost all your points. Okay. Well, that's good. Yo, Gato, what's up, bud? Happy Sunday to you, my... Or Saturday, excuse me. 100 stacks on Asmodan, 45 baseline for the Nazebo, 82 on the Spiders. I don't believe we've cycled through the other numbers, so we will do that. We'll miss a little bit of the 13 talent here, but heroic-wise, Napalm Strike, Blink Heal, and Tomb, Warlord's Challenge, and Riptire. On the opposing side, we just saw Greymane with a Curse Bullet up against this Leoric. Taunt for Varian. I'm a, I thought it was Shield Wall. It might be Warbringer. I'll have to double-check on that one as we take a look at Varian here. Uh, he did go into Shield Wall at level 10. Jugs for the Lili. Jugs of a Thousand Cups, as well as Ravenous Spirit and the... Tide of Sin for Asmodan, who's going to dunk out into Sergeant Hammer. A little over 100 stacks for this Asmodan. Going to laser the wave. Would have liked to see a dunk laser onto the wave, because I'm assuming this is going to be E Master Destruction at level, ten, at level 7. Zebo done with spiders. Good concussion mine on Damongo, who then dives immediately onto the Junkrat. The Warlord challenges the answer into Varian's taunt. Napalm strike down on the ground from Sergeant Hammer. Another dunk from the Asmodan. Phase shift from Brightwing helps out the Hammer health bar. Jugs activated by the Lili. The Jugs of a thousand nopes. I just realized that the Jug for this Lili is literally a water cooler. Did you guys see that? It's literally one of those, like, big orange water cooler things. Or I guess they're yellow. I can't remember. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The igloo water coolers. I don't know if it's a thing outside of the United States, to be honest. I feel like they're different. Anyways, that's a lot of damage onto no more heroes. And that's a dunk from Asmodan confirming the kill. The Ravenous Spirit coming through. Big ol' Slappy Ghost trying to take down this Brightwing. But she blinks away. And I, that's enough gap or enough space created to back off. So glad to be home and wrapped in a bunch of blankets. Rainy market day. Ooh. I don't know why, but on a rainy day, like... Some tea and then pizza later on sounds so perfect. Granted, pizza always sounds good to me, so there's that. Second objective phase. We know it's the second one because it's 40 seconds of channel time necessary. Three jailers are around, and also I have been paying attention to when the objectives have been spawning, so there's that too. Looks like it's going to be going over to the side of Out of Pocket. Who, As I mentioned, they want this to be a 2-0 series, but it's 6-1 to one in kills. Habitual line steppers with the lead in this map by about two levels. A little bit more than that. Don't forget Nazebo and Asmodans are specialists and therefore legally offlaners of the quick match system. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, you should report eb every Abathur you play against for being AFK. Why won't this Abathur come to my team fight? <laughs> In Doom from Leoric, there's a toss groundbreaker combination. Riptire from the Junkrat. There's going to be the jugs out from Lili. And yes, it literally is a sports cooler jug. That's amazing. I've never noticed that before with this skin. Mr. Gatto is asking about pizza. And if you feel like splurging, get wings with it too. When my friends were visiting, we had pizza Friday night when they showed up and there was leftovers, so... And we made wings on Saturday, so Sunday after they left, I literally ate pizza and wings. Oh, that was so good. It was reheated pizza, but it still was good. Oh, pizza and wings is such a slap of a combo. Okie dokie. Uh, looks like Brightwing does go down in mid. I didn't think she'd be taken out right there, but it will be a double kill potentially. I mean, the damage is pretty good into Garrosh. The oh my god, the Gildan cocktail didn't connect. The blind from Lili! If Greymane had gotten one more auto, the blind from Lili would have killed. How unfortunate. Asmodan in bottom lane does go down as we're kind of joking around through mid. It looks like Junkrat and Leork were able to catch him. Looks like an Entomb from Leork may have been used. Pretty low cooldown. 50 seconds, 30 to go. Uh, it's possible. Last Entomb we saw was in top lane, but that was ages ago, it feels. It's sad how many times I've actually been yelled at for not being in a team fight by people who I was even hatting. Dude, here's the storm players don't even understand their own game. I would say I would say there's a large percent in every single MOBA, hell, every single game where players don't fully understand everything that's going on with characters. I, I mess up things all the time myself. 
Jugs from Lili. Huge Warlord's challenge. The dunk from Asvidan is not going to deny this. And I think Habitual Line Stepper has just made an absolutely big brain play in this invade onto the boss here. Asvidan tries to trade. But that right there is going to be a... I mean, even like I even last week I was making a Twitch prediction about Tychus level four, Master Assassin, and someone was like, "That's the Dings one, Bahamut." You're, or no, it was the opposite. Sorry, I made an in the rhythm, uh, Twitch prediction, and someone came into chat and was like, "Bahamut, that's Master Assassin." It's like, oh, okay, yes, with the sixty-five thousand stacks for Master Assassin, absolutely. <laughs> so you know. It's not very surprising to me. So with a three level difference and 10 kill difference, this is 12 to two. It's gonna be boss and bottom lane also grab. I may have gotten 65,000 heroic kills on my HOTS accounts page. That Yeah, that's possible, that's possible. <laughs> That is definitely possible. With your account level, Stark, absolutely. I think Stark has got the highest account level that I have on my friends list. I believe he's the highest on my friends list, at least. Left side camp is being grabbed, or left side of our screen, the objective phase, third one is being grabbed here, 50 seconds of channel time. Habitual line steppers have this boss pushing in bottom lane. That's going to open up things. Mithril Mace for our Leoric at 90 out of 100 stacks. Zebo's done with his baseline, or with his level 1 stackage, but he's at 91 Voodoo Ritual stacks. Full Spider build as well with the uh, Spider Colony level 16. Objective phase delayed by Orc and Beans, and it looks like the side of Habitual line steppers will back off, reset, get 20s, and then go for the team fight. That is what I do believe the scene will be looking for here. Nine point eight set nine point eight seconds of channel time left. Big bowls for our junk rat. Well, that's an entomb with a buried alive, and then Garrosh throws one of the enemies inside the buried alive. The Riptire from Junkrat will also be out as well. They see a trade for Greymane Garrosh. This will be a polymorph on to Varian. He does go down. The Chattering Teeth find the Great One, and Lili's picked off as well. Top and bottom waves are crashing in towards those keeps. Mid lane is about 50%. A big slow on Vates here from Pat. With that extra slow from the level four, the concussion mine is actually not gonna help. Uh, is, it was actually gonna help Vates there. But I don't think they really care. They've split the Nazebo. Asmodan showing top lane. They got a triple kill. It's 15 to three in kills, 20 to 18 in levels. Objective phase will be pushing in through bottom. Let's see, really quickly, top lane keep front gate is still healthy. Superstition is the spider talent too. Su no one, but, but superstition wasn't taken. Dunk from the Asmodan on the Sergeant Hammer here. 324 stacks in the, this map for our General of Hell. Hammer still raining in damage. She is Ultra Capacitor's level 20. A Riptire from Junkrat. No extra oomph. It is cannonballs, as I mentioned before. So just trying to zone the enemies, maybe clear out the wave. The objective phase has arrived through bottom. Pat a little bit low. Face shift from Brightwing to help out some of that health bar. And Tomb from the Orc tries to find the Varian. Unfortunately, he'll be pushed out. Because he was too far out of the Entomb range, as this top lane objective will be dealt with by Orc and Beans. The entire top lane keep front gate should be taken down. Keep should be saved. Mid lane, good siege coming through. Some toads being thrown out here. Another dunk from Asmodan, trying to clear out this minion wave through mid. Hey, Rommel, thanks for the lurk, bud. I appreciate it. Correct. Thus, not full spider build. I love when people come into my Twitch chat, don't say a word, but then the moment I say one thing wrong, they, they hound me on it for like three messages. It's my favorite thing as a Twitch streamer. 
You finished Master Assassin twice or four times. Dunk from Azadan onto Boomer APM. We currently have Hammer still raining in some damage, and Entomb from Leoric will be coming out onto this variant as he will be silenced. Protection status activated. Warlord's challenge, and it's still not enough, but Azadan does finish his stackage this time. Still a few bits of damage thrown in onto this keep through mid. And our fourth objective phase will be coming up soon. Concuss Concussive Blast to push back Nazebo. First bullet from our gray main, chunking onto Sergeant Hammer a little bit. Little Gil and Cocktail thrown out. Phase shift onto Boomer. We'll bolster that HP. It is going to be the Hyper Shift level 1 for Brightwing. Still went into a Soothing Mist, or Critical Mist level 7. And more Gil and Cocktails to be thrown out. Thanks for the follow, bud. Get him out of there. And Asmodan will make work a uh, quick work of bottom lane. Does have pride level 20. We will have the Annihilating Spirit for Nazebo again. This is going to be the Jug of a Million Cups. So heals two targets at one time. Two allies. We will also see Glory to the Alliance and Blunderbuss for the Greyman. 20s are here on both sides. Cannonball being thrown out right there. Garrosh. Ah, I think he was trying to get the Asmodan there, but unfortunately Asmodan was not close enough for the targeting. Riptire from Junkrat to zone. 25 seconds to go on this objective phase. Channel time. A dunk from Asmodan. Lands on a no more heroes. We work with a drain. That's a pretty decent in tomb. A lot of damage under Orc and Beans and Great One. The Jug's coming out from the Lili right now. Is very and dives onto the Junkrat. The Concussion Mine does split him. The Polymorph as well. The Jug's will not be able to save, but Leork is going to be traded in this engagement. The Annihilating Spirit will pick off the Junkrat right there. An all sh uh, 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 Oh my god. Laser from Asmodan will be coming out. Warlord's challenge onto this gray main and the phase shift from Brightwing or the blink heal from Brightwing. Oh, she dives over towards top lane, avoids the critical damage, but a dunk from Asmodan will take her down. And I gotta know, I gotta know, I gotta know. 141 overkill for the Brightwing right there. Objective phase, number five of the game, number four of the game, excuse me. On the left hand side, pushing in, bottom lane keep, mid lane keep are taken down, but it is a triple kill for the side of out of pocket. So Asmodan clears out bottom lane. 128 stacks for our Nazebo baseline. Garrosh, Hammer, Leork, they're looking to step into this right now. Leork is thrown in the Entomb with the Buried Alive on the Lili, and she's just trying to get on out of this one. Activates the Jugs, but those will not be enough healing for her. Garrosh gets the, I think, the ally toss. It might have been a Wraith Walk from Pat, but either way... Core shielding, it, core HP is dropping. But of course, this is the one core that is unique. And here's a storm that does regain HP after not taking damage for a few seconds. So you can see Drek'thar's health bar rapidly rise back up to full. But during that objective phase, a top lane keep did go down. And this will be bottom lane boss grab. This could be a push to win for the side of habitual line steppers. So, our bottom lane boss is grabbed, top lane boss to be traded, but I, I feel like they they have to know the enemies on top lane boss. They may have seen it through the minion wave rotation, but still, Pat's already rotating in. They want to just end with boss through bottom, and with no core shielding, or no keeps available, the core shielding is down, so it will be taking 100% damage, and Drek'thar currently has 28,100 points of HP, dealing 330 damage into enemies, 616 destructions, but I don't think that matters, because I don't think any of these... Uh, I don't think any of these units are considered structures in Heroes of the Storm. Pat a little bit low here. The Riptar from Junkrat does maneuver some of the enemies around. Fates will be able to get the Jug healing, and so will Orc and Beans. The Concussion Mine kind of saving right there. A dunk from Asmodan to try and push back the enemy. Critical miss activated by the Brightwind to get a little extra healing to the allies around. Garrosh rotating in. That is going to be a dead Grey main first. Great one will go down to Sergeant Hammer. All capacitors just ripping through the enemies. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a series on our hands. Map number three is on the way as habitual line steppers do take map number two.
The battle begins shortly, heroes. On the left hand side, we are looking at habitual line steppers with your Hanzo, Muradin, Leork, Rhaegar, and Nazibo. On the right hand side, it is going to be out of pocket. We've got a Vala, Gul'dan, Brightwing, Varian, and Rexar. Of course, Misha will be played by Misha. No one can play Misha. The gates shall open in. Ten we have seconds. a Vala going W build. W build. So she'll be going fire at will. How many five, stacks for Vala by the four, end of the game? Get your predictions three, in. Things of the deep two, for our Nazebo at level one. Let the yeah, I like that. I like that. There's a decent amount of range. So things of the deep for the 20%. 20% basic ability range. We also will be seeing Oasin's Renewal. Symbol Geometry Hanzo. There's that fire at will for Vala. Gul'dan with the Echoed Corruption. Overpower for our Varian, Hyper Shift, Brightwing, and the Easy Prey for Rexar and Misha. Increase Misha a basic attack damage to minions and mercenaries by 150%, and Misha gains 50 armor against minions and mercenaries, reducing the damage taken by 50%. Then Shift from Brightwing, helping out this Varian once again. His Hyper Shift, as I mentioned. Leoric has already got a wave crashing onto the Fort Front Gate. Misha and Rexar are doing the same thing in bottom. Hanzo will come down here and try and get some scatter stacks. Unfortunately, we didn't see anything right there. Yo, Porky, what's up, bud? Happy Saturday to you. All they care about is if it makes money or not. Yep. And if it doesn't make money, guess who gets fired? It ain't it ain't the people that made the horrible choices. No, no. Why would they why would there be repercussions for their stockholder actions? Psh. Repercussions for people with a lot of money? <laughs> Not in my country. Vala vaults away. She's got five stacks currently on that fire at will up in top lane up against the Leoric. Looks like she's gonna rotate out, maybe grab a camp. Macro-wise, the early game is looking pretty good for our left side squad. We have Leork still grabbing wave after wave in top, and Zebo doing the same thing in mid. Some camps to be grabbed by the allies. Murden soaking bottom. Pretty decent start. Nazebo's actually going to make a double soak into bottom lane. I think he's trying to get some extra stackage. Maybe even set up a kill into Gul'dan or Misha. Nah, I think he's just rotating down here to help out. Since the Siege Giants were grabbed. What is it? There was like there was a there was like a meme post recently where it was like someone who was like seriously like just take one million dollar worth of like bonds and invest those and the return rate will be like some stupid amount of money per year. And the comment underneath it was literally like, ah yes, finally financial advice that I can use. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a casual one million dollars and invest it into whatever, you know? <laughs> Anyways, Seed will be spotting here. First one of the game, bottom left of the map. This will be Siege Giants and mid to be cleared away. Hanzo will uh, continue to build up some stackage on simple geometry. Might check the bush over here. Yep, got the Sonic Arrow out onto Varian. Scatter off the wall, picks up a few more stacks. We do have multi shots from Vala raining out. She does have the level four arsenal as well. Good scatter coming out from Naz or from from Hanzo right there. Stormbolt as well. Gul'dan picking up a few stacks of Echoed Corruption. Dang, why didn't I think of that? Yeah, just casually invest a million dollars into, like, stocks and bonds. As I said, if PlayStation would have given me one of those millions for the 40 million they spent on Concord, I could have just... We could have had just easy casting. Hell, I would have started my own... Here's the storm tournaments with, with payouts and stuff, man. If I had a million dollars. Also, if I had a million dollars, the US government would be like, ooh. Care to share and care? And by care, we mean give it. <laughs> phase shift from right wing will help out the variant health bar as we have our second objective phase. Top center of the map. This will be one out of three seeds on the right hand side, four out of pocket. That seed is ready for gathering. I suggest. Imagine my shock shock when the budget runs out and we had nothing functional to show for it. Hmm.
Varian charges in, taunts onto the Rhaegar. There's going to be a heal coming out as well. A little chain heal to some allies around. Does have that level 4 for the healing over time to targets below 50%. Uh, Earth Living Enchantment, I believe. Varian charges in, a taunt as well. They're going to try and take down this Muradin, but another chain heal out from Rhaegar denies that. Nazebo with the, uh, the Dead Rush at level 7 as well. We're going to see a little bit of a mixture on his build with the Things of the Deep. We have the Voodoo Ritual level 4, as well as that... Or Big Voodoo, sorry. Voodoo Ritual's the baseline. Oh, nice zombie wall onto 2 right there. Murd and Dwarf Toss is in. Dead Rush chasing onto Great One. Vate's so very low. The Hanzo gets the snipe with a Q. Nice Storm Bolt right there. Murden Dwarf tosses in, goes for another Storm Bolt. That's gonna be a face shift from Brightwing. I think Mungo is gonna go down. Scatter is good from Hanzo. And that will also be Nazebo with the channel on the second seed of the game. One out of three for both sides. As Nazebo, Nazebo, Nazebo makes his way back into mid lane. Little Dan with uh, Drain at 4 and 7 with the Echo Corruption. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, Totsky, good morning, bud. Good to see you. Hope you're ready to get your uh, booty blasted in <laughs> Mario Party coming up soon. I've basically been threatening everyone this week. <laughs> I've been threatening everyone that we're gonna play with, uh, with some, with some, with some booty hits. Good morning, Totsky. Good to see you, bud. Thank you also for all the DMs. I appreciate it. Appreciate you looking out, bud. 16 stacks for Avala currently. 61 for our Nazebo. 20 for the Echoed Corruption. 7 Regeneration Globes of 25 for our Rexar. And 10 talents here soon to be here on the left-hand side. Dragon Strike, Avatar, Entomb for Leoric, as well as the Ancestor Healing and Ravenous Spirit. That will also be the Entomb coming out onto the Varian. Ravenous Spirit, they are just going to throw everything just about onto this Varian damage-wise. Arena Vengeance from Vala goes out, but it doesn't actually interrupt anything. Cool Dan's going to just clear up this fight right now. Wait, no. No! Uh, Totsky, thank you for the 67, 68 months. Thank you for the tier one for 68 months. Next month, Totsky, you get the nice alert. Next month, Totsky, get the nice alert. Zombie wall from Nazebo zoning a little bit right there. Misha charges in, but it's met by a storm bolt of the Murden. More spiders coming out from Nazebo, but he's things of the deep level one as a reminder. Misha goes down. The orc is trying to mop up some enemies here. Also get some drain, hope, health as well. Pat's so very low on this Leoric, taunted by the Varian. Gul'dan comes through with some fell flames. A nice rain of vengeance from Vala. And I do believe this is going to be a disengage. Vala is going to get tickled a little bit by the dragon strike, but I really do think they should back off on the left-hand side. Pat will be able to cheat a bit of death. He can respawn in this engagement, but I don't think they're going to continue this yet. And so second of three seeds to the right-hand side for out-of-pocket. One more month indeed, and then you'll never have to subscribe here again. <laughs> oh, we're silly. All right, so Vates will be able to reset right there. We got Misha in bottom lane with Rexar. It is, by the way, Bestial Wrath. Increase Misha's basic attack damage by 200% for 12 seconds. She also did go for Aspect of the Beast. Misha's basic attacks lower the cooldown of Misha charge by one second. Shield Wall for the Varian, Blink Heal, Horrify, and Reign of Vengeance. We also will be seeing the Dragon Strike, Avatar, Entomb, Ancestral, and Ravenous Spirit. Not sure if I mentioned those heroics already, but either way. 31 of 40 stacks for Ghoul Dan. Vala with 26 multi shots still. 75 Things of the Deep stack for Nazeba, which also means 75 base stacks, of course. 11 Regeneration Globes for Rexar and Misha. We'll be able to pick up another one in the bottom lane. Next seed is up and available on the top left of the map. Rexar and Misha showing in lane. It kind of feels like this is going to be given. Dragon Strike's a little early right there. Varian charges in, tries to punish that. The natural agility does get off in time. We do have a Horrify from Gul'dan pushing back. Nazebo who's trying to use the Ravenous Spirit, the Entomb from the Orc. Doesn't stop Vala from continuing those autos in. Meanwhile, Varian being chased by the Muradin. 
will not go down. Oh, Chase. That's a nice purge from our Rhaegar that does slow down Gul'dan. Scatter. No follow-up kill to be found as Vala and Brightwing are able to back away. Do you know what Spirit Bond is? Spirit Bond? It sounds familiar, but no, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Rhaegar lunges in with a bit of damage right there. Charge from the Varian. Pat trying to back away. It's the level 20 upgrade for Beastia Wrath. Interesting. It's a good name. Dragon Strike from Hanzo. The Entomb a little too late. May have been able to lock down Varian if he was caught inside of that with the Dragon Strike. But not going to be the case. We've got the level 13 on both sides coming through. Ice Block for Nazebo. We've got Murden's Bronbeard's Rage. Spectral Leech Leoric. We'll see the aspect of Hawks, so that makes a lot of sense with the build currently for Misha. When Swoop hits an enemy hero, Rexer gains 125% attack speed for 4 seconds. Misha basic attacks increase the duration of this buff by 0.75 seconds. Mortal Wound on our Varian. We'll also be seeing the Pixie Boost. Uh, Vala with... Is that Gloom? No, no. No, no. It's Tempered Discipline. Excuse me. Gloom is the other one. It's more purpley. And uh, we also will be seeing... Do -do -do -do, Harvest Life. I was like, it's not Life Funnel. Misha charges in. The Entomb from Lior creates a bit of terrain right here. Brightwing blinking around. It's two out of three seeds on both sides as the Misha does go down. Vala trying to get away, but she accidentally steps inside the zombie wall. The Nazebo spiders come through and things of the deep. Making great work here for our Nazebo player. And that's going to be technically a pentakill as Misha did go down. Orc and Beans trying to get out of here. How much duration on that left? Not enough, but hold on, Muradin. Ah, uh, he was trying to thunderclap this camp and get it to uh, trigger. But now Orc and Beans is caught between some enemies. Misha has respawned. Cody has to self-cast the Ancestral. Nazebo can't catch Rexar inside of that. The Overgrowth plant is here. So now Pell steps in. Stormbolt, thunderclap. Misha charges through, creating a bit more space. Muradin still chasing onto Orc and Beans. Lands the little stun from the Skullcracker level 7. Stormbolt sidestep. Nicely done from Beans. And the bottom lane fort will go down. Mid lane fort to be taken out as well. Top lane wave is pushed back a little bit. But I think this should be, in total, a triple fort phase for habitual line steppers. Vala for our Twitch predictors at 39 stacks currently. Nazebo's favorite glue, huh? Oh, oh, spirit bond. Oh, I see what you did with that because it's like it's like spirit gum. Because I think spirit gum is what you use when you're putting in like um like fake beards and stuff like that or fake hair. Took me a second on that one, Zool. Took me a second, but I got it. I picked it up. 37 stacks for Ghoul Danny. So very close to the Echo Corruption, getting those steps back. Muradin finds, or excuse me, uh, Rexar finds Nazeeb on the left-hand side. And Gul'dan will just drain this overgrowth plant. And it is a triple fort phase, as I mentioned. Giant Slayer on Hanzo. Imposing Presence Muradin, which I actually really like the Imposing Presence for Muradin, level 16 here. I think this is a brilliant pickup up against, you have Vala auto attacks, Rexar and Misha, who do want to auto attack as much as possible. Between the Rexar with the Aspect of Hawk and Misha, of course, getting cooldown reductions. And Misha, of course, they go Beast of Wrath. Hold on, Entomb. That's an absolutely a really good Entomb right there, but it actually does not threaten this variant as much as I thought. The Horrify from Gul'dan ends that Ravenous Spirit, but Leoric's got a mace to Brightwing's face and will take her down. Another slow from Leoric as he's got that Paralyzing Rage level 4, and that is going to be a triple kill for the left-hand side for Habitual Line Steppers. Misha, Varian, and Brightwing. Nazebo, by the way, in bottom lane doing Nazebo things. Doesn't have a whole lot of mana, but continues to push. Did go into the Ring of Poison for our Zombie Wall here. And I was looking to see if maybe something happens in mid. But Zombie Wall lasts one second longer. The center is filled with poison that deals a total of 646 damage over four seconds. This damage start uh, starts small and increases over the duration. Dragon Strike to zone Orc and Beans. But it doesn't look like it's going to be uh, setting up any sort of kill for the rotation to the bottom. Zebo, is he hearthing in mid? Looks like he tapped well and he's going to head over to the objective. Maybe get a top lane wave at 139 Voodoo Ritual stacks. And maybe, just maybe, Nazebo will finish out Voodoo Ritual stackage. 
Could be Annihilating Spirit. I mean, Annihilating Spirit has been really, really good for the Zebo players. Also, it's a great shutdown onto Brightwing Phase Shift value. 45 stacks for Avala currently. Zebo throws some spiders in the wraparound onto the right hand side. This is kind of a pincer movement right now. A little slow on that rotation, but it's going to be Rhaegar going down first. Rexar will be traded. Huge damage from Gul'dan. Does have the Ruinous Affliction, so he's going to be able to chunk into the enemies right now. And Pell has to back away. The Piercing Bolt from Smurd is good, but Pat, Prostman Pat is going to be taken down as well. Now, I will mention this, though. During all of that, Nazebo, I, I don't believe, was present because he was currently channeling and finishing out the objective. So while they do lose three, the objective is denied to the enemy. And some camps will now be grabbed while the death time has elapsed. Catapult pushing into bottom. Vala with 46 of her stack. She did not go Manticore at level 16. She's going into Punishment. While at Max Hatred, Multi-Shot cooldown recharges 50% faster. I have tried this talent in ARAMs. Now, of course, you know, competitive Heroes of Storm is different than ARAMs. I mean, ARAMs, you're, you're kind of just 5v5 mashing constantly. But I, I feel like, honestly, this talent just... This talent feels a little bit like a bait. I don't know why. I just really don't feel like I get that much value out of Punishment. Manticore just feels way too hard to pass up. Also, what's the cooldown on multi-shot? I actually don't know. It's like six seconds. Oh, 13 seconds on multi-shot, actually. So, having max hatred, 50% faster cooldown, I, I guess. But, I don't know. Manticore just feels like the jam. Soothing Mist activated by the right wing. A Horrify from Gul'dan is pretty big right there. As there is going to be a Dragon Strike from Hanzo. He does go Dragon Awaken, so he can spam this quite a bit more. Since he gets cooldown reduction per hitting an enemy hero with Storm, Bow, Scatter Arrow, or Basic Attack. So, basically, anything but his Sonic Arrow. 20 talents here, fight. Pat's going to get caught inside that placebo zombie wall. Gets pulled down early, and I do believe Misha will fall. She gets a mend, but she's still taken out. Mithril Mace finished by Lior. Yeah, I, I've tried anything. I've Because there's there's another one of the... There's, a, there's another... There's a Q talent at 16 that I'm blanking on, if I'm not mistaken. And that one doesn't feel... Is it like Frost Shot? No, that's earlier. Hold on one second. Let me, let me just... Oh no, it's Seething Hatred. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, the uh, the Frost Shot is 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 over here. But yeah, there's there's Seething Hatred, which while a max hatred increase all damage by 10%. I've tried that one as well. It, it just I feel like Manticore is like the necessary level 16. Yeah, yeah, I was blanking. Once again, Twitch chat. Bahamut doesn't know something. I've got the coverage for it. Stormbolt from Muradin. That's a Reign of Vengeance down from the Vala. Decent damage on Pell, but they are able to Dwarf Toss away. Misha's trying to chase in as well. No chase to be found. Cool, Dan, working on the objective over here. Phase shift from Brightwing, and that should be objective phase over to the right-hand side. Don't see a way for them to make this rotation in time, and we'll have 20s on both sides. Oh, Glory to the Alliance for our Varian. We'll also be seeing the Reign of Vengeance upgrade with the Storm of Vengeance. We'll see the Haunt from Ghoul Dan. 165 stacks for Nazebo, so he did go into the Vile Infection. We've got Rhaegar with the Storm Shield right now. Taunt from Varian on to our Nazebo. Gets polymorphed into a pig, but is able to back away. Buried alive for the Leork, as well as Rewan Muradin. Invisible Friends. Rexar is holding level 20. Not sure what he's going to go into. Having a spear comes out the taunt from the very end. That's going to be a really good mortal wound onto Muradin as well, denying some of the ancestral value. Rhaegar does go down. Piercing Stormbolt onto this Varian. He's caught inside the Entomb. The blink heal from Brightwing. The oh my god, I can't believe it. Varian lives right there. Oh, the shield wall helping out. Rexar still unsure about his level 20. That's a beautiful and that's a beautiful zombie wall with a dragon strike through it. Rexar feigns death with level 16, but he dead. 57 stacks for Arvala. She just pushed up the wave onto the bottom lane. Keep front gate.
All right. Vial infection is done. An elemental conduit. So activate to gain lightning shield and grant all nearby allied heroes uh, shield equal 10% of their maximum health for five seconds for up to five seconds after activating. Hitting enemy hero with it, with this effect. With this effect's lightning shield nearby allied heroes assured. What? Hitting enemy hero with this effect's lightning shield gives nearby allies a shield equal to 1.5% of their maximum health over five seconds. Sorry, the, the, the phrasing of that seems really awkward. Oh, there's the spirit bond. Increase the duration of bestial rasp by 50%. Baseline is 12. Misha basic attacks heal Rexar for 50% of her damage dealt during bestial wrath. I will say this is probably the first spirit bond I've seen all year. Bottom lane wave is going to be starting to push in as well. Oh, team fight over here in the top, though. Ravenous Spirit activation. Entomb finds the Misha. Dragon Strike coming out as well. As, I, as a reminder, does have the Dragon Awakens. And baseline is 60 seconds. Top lane wave is starting to crash in. Mid lane wave is looking pretty good. And habitual line steppers, it's 4 to 16 in kills, 22 to 21 in our levels. Full Vile Infection. Habitual line steppers could reverse sweep this series. As Out of Pocket did win map number one. Scatter coming out. That's camp grabbed as well by Habitual Line Steppers. Polymorph. Heldor gets turned into a crab. Ancestor Healing is forced out as well as that Elemental Conduit. That's going to be Lior getting low. He goes down. Misha traded. Horrified from Gul'dan as the Entomb or the Zombie Wall around Varian does lock him in place. Murden Dwarf Toss is that in. Gets hit immediately with a Reign of Vengeance. Rexar feigns death, but I feel like it's once again the same thing as we saw before. Hanzo gets an insane scatter right there. Rexar is... Oh my god, that Zombie Wall is just absolutely... Seven hundred and four with that scatter from Hanzo. I mean, realistically, like, oh, I got a twelve overkill, man. Oh, man. All right. Well, either way, habitual line steppers. They find the pentakill, and that is going to be map number three in our third best of three, going over to the side of habitual line steppers. GG, well played. Uh, that series is a two-one for our blue squad. Well, if you enjoyed the games, be sure to drop a follow on the stream. We do do a lot of Heroes of Storm content and casting. We also do other MOBAs as well. We're learning Predecessor. We're playing Deadlock. Got a lot of fun on the channel, so be sure to drop a follow as Vala had 70 stacks. She had 69 or more. GG's to the Vala player. GG's. Uh, we are seven subs away from October Movie Night for uh, for Discord Movie Night, excuse me. If you are feeling generous, if you got a resub, if you got a prime, now's a good time to use it. We're going to go ahead and run some ads and get set up for our next bit of fun content here at twitch.tv slash Gaming.